Hey, you're on the Bible forum. I'm Warren Sprouse. Do you have all your faculties? Can you put your hand in the air and wave it back and forth like that? If you can, you should be okay. We're going to talk a little bit about the biblical prophecy. You know, the Bible talks about the end day scenario. It talks about a time <clears throat> when the ruler of the known world will require everyone to worship at his in his temple or his God and receive the mark. We call it the mark of the beast. It's translated as 666, either on the back of the hand or on the forehead. We know about that. A lot of people don't believe it's going to happen. I, for one, am not sure it's going to be exactly as we picture it. But banks in the world, at least in the Western world, have been quietly rolling out biometrics to identify their customers, verifying them by their fingerprint, their voice, or their eye scan. And retailers like Amazon are getting into the game. These companies are amassing giant databases of our most personal information, including our gait, the gait, you know, when you're walking, how we hold our cell phone, our typing patterns. Things that raise naughty questions about data security and privacy. Well, now the Wall Street Journal is reporting that Amazon wants customers to be able to pay for items in physical stores by simply waving their palm in front of a payment terminal. The system would link your palm's image to a payment card. Think about that. They have all our financial and personal information wrapped up in a social security number, credit cards, uh, usernames and passwords. Now they're wanting to store a picture of the palm of your hand. Now, you do know the folks that read the Bible, who read the Bible a thousand years ago, struggled with those futuristic passages it described this sort of thing. Well, now Amazon plans to pitch the idea of palm reading terminals to coffee shops, fast food restaurants, and other merchants that do lots of repeat business with their customers. Palm biometrics haven't been used for payments on a big scale, but fingerprints have. Apple Pay, Apple Credit Card, all involve pay by touch with a cell phone. Voice ID is also now prevalent, particularly in bank call centers. Now, there's an intrigue in all of this. Banks have had a love and hate relationship with biometrics for decades. Customers are leery. There's a high rate of failure. As anyone with an iPhone knows, a wet or greasy finger won't work. A voice recognition system often fails if someone has a cold or they're a little bit tipsy. But banks and increasingly retailers have been working in overdrive to use biometrics both in the back-end systems where consumers won't see them and now in the public-facing systems. For example, Chase, Bank of America, City Bank, Wells Fargo have introduced various biometric ID options, including voice, fingerprint, eye, or facial recognition. MasterCard and Visa are rolling out payment cards with embedded fingerprint ID. BMO and MasterCard pioneered something called Selfie Pay, which lets customers authenticate themselves for online shopping. The banks say their systems are completely secure, just like their vaults. But they are proceeding gingerly to avoid making their customers nervous. Several banks gave no comment to Axios.com when asked about their biometrics programs. Amazon did the same thing. Some banks have dropped the creepier biometrics. Republic Bank of Kentucky 
said in 2016 that it would let customers log into their mobile banking app by fingerprint or eye vein scan. Now it only offers the finger option. The eye vein scan was a little creepy. You, you figured you got that one, right? There are already some horror stories. Thumbprints have been spoofed with the type of gelatin used in gummy bears and a picture of someone else's thumb. A pair of twins hacked HSBC's phone banking voice ID system, though it wasn't that easy. Facial recognition systems can be foiled by deep fakes, masks, and virtual reality. And they often show racial bias. So what they're saying is, a biometric is a very sensitive piece of personal information. If your password gets stolen, you create a new password. If your fingerprints get stolen, you can't even sign the check. You can't get new fingerprints. They probably cut your fingers off. There's a reality check in all of this. Banking and credit card companies say biometrics, which so far are usually optional, are invaluable in fighting fraud and that with them, spoofing is very rare. They call the technology proven or safe. And they say that many customers, particularly younger ones, welcome it. You do know younger customers aren't as wise, as wary, as experienced as olders. You know that, right? Biometric systems always have a way of checking for liveness, that's their word, to guard against robots and AI intruders. The systems routinely avert criminal behavior. One example, discover the credit card company, receives so-called voice prints of callers, not recordings of their voice, and flags known fraudsters. Wall Street Journal report. A growing number of people welcome the convenience thanks to cell phones making finger ID routine. Trace Fushi of AIT Corporation, a banking consultant firm, told Axios.com that a growing, that if it weren't for being able to use your thumbprint on your iPhone, I think biometrics would still be something on the fringe of authenticating. Thank you, iPhone. On the retail side, Amazon isn't the only company dabbling in biometrics. The New York Mets have kiosks that will let you pay for snacks with your fingerprint. A handful of quick-serve restaurants like Cali Burger and Malibu Poke are letting customers order via facial recognition at self-serve kiosks. MyTech, which sells a face ID verification system, counts Airbnb, Instacart, and Poshmark as customers. Between the lines, we see that customers don't see the banks, and retailers have heavy use of passive or behavioral biometrics to thwart the fraud. On a mobile phone, that could be the angle that you hold it currently at, in working these devices to tell whether it's, you're going to be successful or not. Whether you're typing in the password with your thumb or with your finger. These passive biometrics can tell all of these variations Instantly, actually, they say, they can tell whether it's a real customer or somebody else. The bottom line here is that whether we like it or not, biometrics are going to be a bigger part of our lives. And while the banking industry is heavily regulated, the retail world isn't. So there's a different standard of trust and security in the retail environment than there is in the banking world. But we'll all get there sooner or later. How do I know that? The children sing the song, because the Bible tells me so. This is stuff God prophesied thousands of years ago. And we're starting to see it take place. The back of the hand or the forehead. 
Take that literally. It could be the palm. It could be a thumbprint. It could be the eyes. It could be the whole mask. You just walk by and look into the camera and go on about your business and it knows everything about you. But what if you don't show up at whatever it is to have all that those pictures taken? Then you can't buy or sell. Simple, huh? And people coming along at the end of the age need simply to add one more dynamic to all the technology they already have. And it may be a number, not burned into your skull or under the back of your hand, but implanted. And then it would make, it's like a prefix to your credit card company or your credit card number. Very simple. And we have the technology to do it. You ready? I'm listening for the trumpet. I don't know about you.